A short story by Cynthia Ryland, The Planting Things. Mr. Willis was a man who enjoyed planting things. He had several beds of zinnias, a large circle of green onions, a couple of barrels of eggplants, a row of spinach, and some Swedish ivy on his front porch. Mr. Willis was not a practical gardener, so it did not matter to him whether or not he could eat what he grew, or even if what he planted grew badly or not at all. Mr. Willis just enjoyed planting things. Mr. Willis's wife lived with him, and she was not well. She was old, as was he, but it didn't seem to bother him so much, and she lay in bed most of every day. Mr. Willis loved her. He had loved her for 56 years, and he tended to her needs. Her favorite food was a chocolate milkshake mixed up with an egg and some powdered malt. He fixed one for her twice a day and more if she asked. Mr. Willis missed his wife as he puttered about his yard, planting his favorite things. Sometimes she would pull herself up from her bed and stand at the window, watching him work among his onions or zinnias, but not often. She did not seem to enjoy life any longer since she had become old, as if she had decided there was no more for her to do. And Mr. Willis, as hard as he might try, could not change this. On summer evenings, if the mosquitoes weren't too bad, Mr. Willis sat on his front porch and listened to the sound of children playing at the house just down the road. Traffic was light, and he could hear the crickets and the katydids in his apple trees. Sometimes he almost forgot, sitting there, that Mrs. Willis was in the house. On his front porch, Mr. Willis's Swedish ivy, growing down from a pot attached to the ceiling, was so healthy that Mr. Willis did not tend to it as he did other growing things. Plucking off a brown leaf or two, that was all the plant required, and if Mr. Willis could ignore it for days. But on one summer evening, when there was still light enough outside to show up a brown leaf for plucking, Mr. Willis' the Swedish ivy gave him the surprise of his life. He was glad he was on good terms with God, in case it should be assigned to him. On top of the pot, among the ivy, a robin had built her nest right there on the porch of Mr. Henry P. Willis. She had nested. There were plenty of trees about, but no, she had chosen to grow her babies on his porch. Mr. Willis had thought at first she was one of those stuffed birds used to decorate Christmas trees or Easter bonnets. He thought someone had tricked him, still being a cautious man. He had not reached for the bird, but had moved closer. I level with her, and he knew then she was real, real, and sitting on eggs. Charlotte, he went right to his wife's bedroom. Charlotte. She was lying on her back, looking up at the ceiling. The room was gray. Charlotte, you'll never believe this. There's a bird nesting in the Swedish ivy. Mr. Willis's face was the brightest object in the room. She could see it shining. He took hold of her hand. It's a robin, dear, he said. A robin, and she has eggs. I stood right beside her. Can you believe it? Mrs. Willis smiled slightly. I'm happy for you, dear, she said. Mr. Willis rubbed the top of her hand. Would you like to see, he asked. I don't think so right now. So Mr. Willis went back out to the porch, quietly closing the door behind him, and he sat down softly in his chair and watched the bird, feeling his heart pound in his chest. The following morning, Mr. Willis went to check the nest. The bird was away, and he saw three blue eggs lying in the nest. Swedish ivy bunched all around and spilling from the pot. Mr. Willis knew not to touch the eggs. He went on to his chores and waited for the robin to return. After he had given his wife her morning milkshake, he asked her again, gently propping up the pillows behind her head, Would you like to see the nest, dear? Mrs. Willis smiled and patted his hand. I'll see it. Don't worry. I'll see it soon. Would you like to see it now? Can I help you out to the porch? Mrs. Willis sighed. No, thank you, dear. I'll just lie here and rest a while. You go on. Don't worry about me. 
Mr. Willis left her, worrying about her as he did nearly every minute he was awake. He pulled up some onions, watered the eggplant, and checked the nest again. The robin was back sitting like a statue, never moving her head or blinking an eye, no matter how near Mr. Willis stood. Her being there on his porch among his ivy took his breath away. One day, Mrs. Willis stood at the front door and finally did see the bird to satisfy her husband. She said she found the bird being there curious and went back to bed. Mr. Willis spent many summer evenings sitting on the porch with the robin. He never told anyone else about her, never pointed her out to visitors, for he feared that someone might frighten her or touch her eggs or steal her nest. He had learned that she would not leave her nest to protect herself. Sitting with her day after day was like waiting for a baby to be born, as it had been for Mr. and Mrs. Willis when they were young and expecting their child. It had been quiet then, too, the waiting. The world had slowed down for them, and the days had been long and full of conversation. And finally, their baby boy, Tom, had come. Mr. Willis remembered this, sitting with the robin, and it gave him a feeling of great peace. He was sorry he and his wife had had only one child. All three of the robin's eggs hatched sometime on a Thursday morning. Mr. Willis went to check on the nest after fixing his wife's breakfast, and he discovered the robin missing and three skinny, squawking babies. Well, he said to them, I'm a daddy. He stood beside the nest, beaming. In the days that followed, the mother robin was away from the nest most of the time, hunting for food. Mr. Willis wished he could make it easier for her, and he tried leaving popcorn and bread on the perch. But she was a particular mother and seemed to want only baby food he could not supply. So he just sat with her babies, commending them on their fine growing bodies and scolding them for their constantly gaping mouths. He sat in his chair and watched the birds and laughed out loud. Mrs. Willis stood at the door once, watching her husband and his birds. She was surprised they had actually hatched, and she congratulated him. You've always done well with your planting, dear she said. Your Swedish ivy must have been good for them. And she went back to bed. Mr. Willis had thought the birds would probably fly away from the nest one by one, as children do. But one day, they were all gone, the mother and the children, and they did not come back. It's probably best, thought Mr. Willis. Best they go all at once, with no long leave takings and teary goodbyes again and again. But he did not miss, but he did not miss them any the less, just because they'd all flown in one morning. The empty nest stayed in the ivy until the winter, when he was sure they wouldn't be back. He brought his chair and his ivy inside for the season, removing the nest and putting it on top of his dresser. Mr. Willis would look after his wife all winter. Then, come spring, he would put the nest, ready-made, in one of his apple trees, he was a man who enjoyed planting things.